Opus Echo of Starsong caught my attention because of its positive reviews and gorgeous visuals. It looked like it was going to make me an emotional wreck too, so I had to check it out. What I didn't expect was how massive the whole experience was. Like the game's full of lore, world building, and space exploration. But despite all the complicated politics and subplots, it still manages to be a very personal story between June, Ada, and the rest of its characters. There's a lot of story to take in here by the way, so I'll do my best to summarize things. Echo of Starsong starts with its main character, June, after he enters an asteroid cave. He's an old man at the beginning of the game, but he begins to retell his life story, starting from 66 years ago, the day he met Ada. Long story short, many people explore asteroids of Thousand Peaks in search of a valuable resource called Lumen. June happens to be one of them, with his ultimate goal being to regain his clan's honor. Accompanied by his guardian K, he works as one of these cave runners, searching for Lumen Caves. One day, while looking for intel, he has a chance encounter with Ada and her pilot Remy. One thing leads to another, and they all end up working together. It helps that Ada is a witch too, which basically means that she can track down Lumen and sing star songs, sound frequencies that open gates in Lumen Caves. Together, they explore different asteroids, all while learning more about each other and reaching for their own goals. The story was a bit intimidating to get into, mostly because a bunch of terms, history, and politics are thrown around. And there are over 200 collectible memories in the game, each with their own unique descriptions. That doesn't include all the descriptions for the game's locations too, so it took me a while to process everything. Well, actually, I ended up skimming through a lot of the optional text, just because I got tired of getting interrupted by them when I was playing the game. It didn't help that the first chapter was like one hour of linear gameplay and visual novel segments. I ended up assuming that most of the game was going to be like that. It's still mostly a visual novel, but other genres are blended together in the next chapters. The main story has you exploring Lumen Caves in search of secrets. It's a straightforward experience, with visual novel sections and cutscenes in between. So you just need to move between different areas, pick up objects, and interact with contraptions along the way. The puzzles in these caves are simple, like to open locked gates, you just need to choose the correct star song using June's scepter, adjust the volume, and align it with the gate's markings. Ada sometimes records star songs for some gates, but other times they can be acquired from a pool of lumen. Now, outside of these main story caves, the game turns into a space exploration RPG. Echo of Star Song will have you travel to different parts of its universe using your ship. I absolutely love this part of the game because it reminded me of Mass Effect, except in Opus, you don't need to probe any planets. The game has a big overworld map and all you need to do is select a place to travel there. If it's an undiscovered location, then you'll need to analyze it first to get details. Every trip should be calculated though, since fuel is burned every time you travel. You can lose your ship's armor to hostile NPCs too, so yeah. If you don't stock up on both resources, you'll either end up stranded in space or blown up to pieces. But other than that, there's no real consequence. Like, there's no game over screen or anything. My ship got blown up like two times and all it did was make older June go, oh my bad, I remembered that wrong. And then the game reloads the latest save file. I think the only bad thing about this system is that you can't manually save in the game, so you gotta wait and skip through dialogue. So going back to exploring the universe, there isn't much to go to at the start, so you'll just need to read messages and choose location coordinates. But later on, there will be more optional locations and caves to find. When it comes to searching for a main story Lumen Cave, you'll have to do these sound puzzles where you focus Ada's singing to the right signal, letting her record a new star song for that cave. It gets repetitive, sure, but these moments are sprinkled throughout the story, so it wasn't very tiring. Plus, it helps that the music in this game is really good. But yeah, for optional Lumen Caves, the game just kinda skips that minigame and shows you where the asteroid is. Using exploration kits on these caves lets you acquire materials for ship upgrades and other stuff that you can sell in markets. So yeah, this is the main way to get cash to stock up on resources. 
I have run out of money a few times, but the game was very forgiving about it. I just had to pull up in hub areas and do odd jobs until I got enough money. A lot of the side content is described rather than shown when you're exploring different places though. Like all you get are a few visuals and faceless NPCs. I've had encounters where I could choose to give some of my resources to help someone, and I even had some supernatural stuff happen in some of the caves, but these encounters were so brief that they felt like filler arcs to me, at least compared to the game's whole story. Still, I liked having choices in this part of the game. Some of the encounters are random events where you'll need to choose between different dialogue options. One option lets the game roll random numbers based on your current luck. So if the resulting number is above the level required to succeed, then you might gain money or items. If it's lower, then you either get nothing or just a small item. It's the same thing for combat encounters when you're traveling, so you can completely avoid losing armor by having high luck. So yeah, I found all the different mechanics out of the ordinary for a narrative-driven game like this. I think it all blended well though, but ultimately, your enjoyment will depend on how invested you are in its story. The whole thing's basically a space opera, but other characters in the story get their own spotlight too. You get to know their motivations and bits of their life. The game is mostly told through June's perspective though, so it's always going to go back to his blooming relationship with Ada. But I liked how the game had this whole theme of finding yourself and making your own choices on top of having romance. I just wish that June and Ada had more moments together, because those were some of my favorite bits. The story was kind of predictable at times with some melodramatic moments, but it was presented in such a sincere way that it got to me a few times. The visuals, music, and voice acting put so much weight into those scenes too. I ended up finishing the game in about 12 hours. I don't think I have anything that bothered me about the game though, apart from stuff that I already talked about earlier. Well, maybe Remy? She was kind of annoying throughout the story. Even when I learned about her backstory, I was just like, oh, okay. But yeah, <laughs> I think that Echo of Starsong's story is going to stick with me for a while. I highly recommend it if you're into narrative-driven games like this. Oh, and the Full Bloom edition features Japanese and Mandarin voice acting too, so it's the perfect version to play. The game's out on, like, every platform, and if you have Xbox Game Pass at the time of this video's release, the game can be downloaded right now. Let me know what you thought about the video. Thank you to my patrons at Patreon for the support. I've actually been planning on buying this game since it was released last year. I'm glad I waited, like I didn't even know it was going to get voice acting and a Game Pass release. I hope more people get to play this though, because it deserves more recognition. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.